Well, I wish I'd stuck to me guns and left that bloody video up, but as I didn't or wasn't 100% sure they were gonna name him, I could have been liable for being sued. But although I haven't got a penny to, or a pot to piss in, they could still make your life very difficult. And that's the whole thing of it, isn't it? The BBC protects until it's completely unprotectable. So apparently, it's not one person, it's many, and Hugh Edwards now is in somewhere getting his mental health looked after. What a cop-out, and leaving his missus to it. And um, so, is it girls or boys? Well, I'm going with boys, fuck it. I always thought the guy was a bit, like, effeminate in certain areas, but there it is. Now, if he wants to be interested in boys, that's wrong, isn't it? Because when I say boys now, it's funny, right? When you get to a certain age, when you're, <laughs> when you're 18, a boy is somebody of about seven or eight or younger, right? When you're 25, a boy is anything below 16. Me, and I shouldn't say this, but at 48, a boy, oh, he's only a boy, and that could be up to 25. And that's not derogatory, it means he's just young, right? So you have to remind yourself, so I actually... But yeah, if he's interested in boys, I'm guessing the boys he's interested in are probably, uh, well, below the legal age, but I could be wrong. Uh, uh, however, time will tell. Anyway, so what he does then is for years, he's after other people behind his missus back, and then when the shit comes on top, he takes cover and leaves his missus to take the flag. I feel sorry for her, to be honest. I don't know the woman. She's probably a complete lefty lunatic, but nobody deserves this. <coughs> Um, I would have wonder were there any indications, but perhaps there weren't. Or perhaps some people just don't pick up on that kind of thing. I don't know. She's had five kids with him, so it's not as if he's not up for it, but whatever. But how many more will come out now, I wonder? Um, will they open the floodgates up for other people to come forward about other people within the BBC? I hope so. I really do. Um, why is it, though? But there is such a collection of wrongers in the BBC. Is there a, like, because you understand that there's a thing out there called the, the masonry and the Masonic group, you know, the masons, basically. And they have a funny handshake amongst themselves. They know, or, you know, if they're a stranger, they'll meet and they'll let each other know via their own ways that they're in the lodge. Is there, within the BBC, a certain way that one will communicate with the other to let them know that they're into the deviance of it all? Or is it an un, un, unwritten fact? Is it is it one of those not-so-secret secrets? Like Jimmy Savile. Is it a case that there's most people at the BBC end up knowing that that person over there likes young girls, that one likes young boys, that one likes BDSM, that one likes Meccano, I don't know, I'm just taking a piss. But is it, is it just one of those things that everybody there knows? And if so, if that is the case, right, then if they all know that they're into young boys and young girls and they don't do anything about it, they're just as bad. I mean, there's a load of reasons why I couldn't work at an organisation like that. A, I couldn't keep my mouth shut and I tell people they're a cunt. B, they couldn't work in the police force because of the corruption. If the police force actually did everything it was meant to on the tin and nothing else, you know, there may be the odd mistake by it, but generally speaking, if the police were what they were meant to be, then I would say being a policeman was respectable and honourable thing to do, but as we know, that's not the case. And we now know that the BBC is literally crammed to the rafters, full of nonces, um, degenerates, uh, corrupt, uh, Marxist, commies, lunatics, uh, people who have been so utterly, utterly indoctrinated that they're absolutely off their fucking heads. And we know that the whole point of the BBC is to mould the people that watch it. That was why it was set up in the first place, so there's no great shock there. But it just... Is there any way we just take it over? No, I mean that in the nicest possible way. Right? And I mean that legally. Just, how do I mean that exactly? Because I've got to try and be realistic here. 
Is there any way that there could be people who are respected, who aren't Ben Walker, who could go in and oversee it until the management have been moved, right? Because the management know about this, right? The management are corrupt and bent. That's the reason why they are where they are. I mean, it, it's like common purpose. People need to look into that as well because it's not something I mentioned enough. But common purpose is within every facet of management in every big organisation in the UK. And its aims are to change the direction of the UK through undemocratic means, all right? Although they'll say they're a charitable organisation trying to do good and bless it. So, hello, Mr. Tip Driver, how are you? But, I, I can't believe just how bad the BBC is. And as a person who doesn't watch it, it doesn't make me feel like I'm better than anybody else who does. Because there's many people out there that aren't aware of what's going on in the BBC. I'm surprised, but there are. You've only got to look at the statue outside that was designed by a nonce, for nonces. And then some bloke got up there and tried to chisel off the, uh, the, the kinky bits and got arrested. Now, if you want to know more about that, um, that got arrested for filming it. Uh, they were trying to say that he had prior knowledge of it. Um, nothing, I haven't got a clue because uh, it has nothing to do with it, so I wouldn't know. But I don't think Paz had, ha, had prior knowledge, I should say. But at what point do we say that the, the, the BBC, as it stands at the moment, isn't fit for purpose? Because it's politically motivated, it lies, as we know. I mean, this is a guy that he's been found out now, but all the way through lockdown, like many of his other compadres, or should we say comrades, right, was out breaking all of the laws because they knew it was bullshit that they were pushing. All of that pandemic was bollocks. I'm not fucking saying it now because it was utter bollocks. All of a sudden, for two years, flu fucks off and nobody hears it from it. Cold fuck off, nobody hears from it. But it's replaced by COVID. No. And they scare the living fuck out of every cunt that's there until eventually everybody gets stabbed with injections that are poisonous to them and now they're all dropping dead. But nobody says fuck all about that. And it was your fucking BBC that pushed it. Fuck the cunts. Not just them. But it was a massive part of it. Every fucking drama that they had on it was pushing the narrative. Every TV show was pushing the narrative. The news was pushing the narrative. Fucking radio pushing the narrative. Anything they could get their hands on because they were heavily funded by the people who were making money out of it and their overlords. Nah, fuck them. I hate them. Absolutely despise them. Do you know what? There's probably some innocent people working in the BBC, probably in the canteen and places like that, the cleaners, etc, etc. Some of the low-down ranks that aren't party or privy to what goes on at the top. And for those people, I generally feel sorry for them. But the ones at the top, all the ones that know, if they got struck down today by a thunderbolt from him upstairs, I would be happy. Now that sounds a bit harsh, but they're evil. These cunts that try and circumnavigate all the rules that you have to go by, but they don't because they, they're in the clear, right? And all the ones that made sure that old people died alone and people fucking stayed in their house getting psychosis and depression and other people were missing their treatment because of this bullshit they ended up dying of cancer or whatever else. These people are all complicit and fuck them, I hate them, right? And it has to be said, people have to be honest and speak up these days because people are too afraid, right? And really, what is it? Fuck them. If the BBC collapsed tomorrow and nobody had TV, I wouldn't say it'd be a bad thing because most of the time it's not actually giving you good information. And a lot of the time it's pushing out of degeneracy about kids learning about their numerous different sexes that they are or finding out why it's good to do this to themselves or whatever. Fuck that, it's gross. Fucking hell. In my day, it's Jamie and the Magic Torch. Now, I know that was a bit tripped out, but fuck it, whatever. I like that trip to Trompton, Magic Roundabout, the Flumps, the Wombles. Fucking all that stuff was fairly innocent. Even I owned the engine when he had a fucking interest in the fucking dragon come out of it. Even that was innocent, all right? And then you had Thomas the Tank being voiced by Ringo Starr. That was quite chilling after a bad day at school. And then came school. TV programs being filled in by Andy Peters. Yes, 
that's where it all started to go downhill. That and that fucking idiot Schofield the nonce with his hand up a fucking gopher. It started to go down a bit hill there. But whatever. The BBC has always been a fucking power for evil. The amount of times they badly reported or totally reported lies in my lifetime, and I've noticed it. Even as a kid, you can see them changing the story. And then when you look back 20 years later in hindsight, you realise they were engineering the truth. Fucking lying bastard. But isn't that different to America? You look at CNN, NBC and all the others, and you look at the ones that go back further than that, that were talking about the Vietnam War making out that they were making gains they were they were fucked in the ass all the time and the American troops had their hands tied behind their backs by Nixon so they were never going to win whatever anyway let's get off of that so how many more are going to come forward well if you're out there I would suggest that it would be in your interest every one of you to come forward get it <coughs> get these people off the TV for a kick off actually get back some control. Now, here's the thing, even if you think you're a willing participant at the age of 15 or 16, I thought I knew a lot at 15 or 16, turns out, I was just naive as fuck. So, if you had an adult trying to get pictures out of you when you were 15 or 16 or 17 or whatever it is like that, and they were in a position of power, expose them. Why? It's a fucking robbing. Adults who want to send pictures to each other, fine. When you get past a certain age, that's deemed legal. You might still be a dense fucking idiot at that age, but it's deemed legal. Below that is illegal. There it is. Anyway, look, hope you're all having a good day. I'm still trying to get over this fucking flu. We keep wanting to go back to the gym, but I'm going to uh, it's not even right yet, but you can tell my voice is not quite right. And I'm told if you go to the gym when you're ill, it's actually counterproductive. So I'm sat there going, come on. There you go. I hope you're all doing well. We're not that far away from the weekend. Although, I don't know what you're doing the weekend. I'm resting. So that's two weekends fucked. Whatever. Anyway, I'm now going to run around in circles. I'm probably going to do about a mile each way all fucking day. It's soul destroying. I didn't pass my test to pick up mud and run a mile there and tip it and come back and do it all again. But this is what I'm stuck with because of my political views and the persecution from the left within big corporations. Fucking despise it. But it's a job. It's better than being unemployed and skin. But it is soul destroying. I can't tell you how soul destroying it is. Anyway, never mind. And oh, we're not drinking now as well. Some of you will be pleased about that. I've just decided at the moment to try and get better and give this diet and gym a go that I would pack in the drinking for a short while, not for long. Till whatever. Can't believe I lost half a stone since over the weekend with this bug. Fucking hell. Right. I'll go back to sitting in this truck and thinking about where did I go wrong. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That's many fucking things to ponder over. Uh, never mind. Anyway, you all have a good time. I'll see you soon.